Okay, friends, so we are back, and uh, uh, this is Chris. I, as I promised that I would supply a follow-up video uh, to my new uh, Rogers Dynamatic pedal. Uh, having used it in the real world uh, in some live settings, in rehearsals, and recording studios, I've used it uh, in clubs, I've used it in rehearsals, I've, I've used it on festival stages. Uh, and so this thing has gotten pretty much through the ring of everything that I ask a drum pedal to do. And so having lived with it for that chunk of time, uh, I have some observations that I'd like to share. First off is, as I suspected when I first unboxed this thing and, and tried it out, it continues to be a very smooth pedal. It really does feel comfortable. Uh, I do really enjoy the way it feels. Uh, that's, a, that's number one. I feel like in, in, in my search for a drum pedal, looking for one that translates what's in my head through my foot to the bass drum with the least amount of, shall we say, uh, signal loss, if you can put it in audiophile terms. I was going to say with the least amount of resistance, but this is a bass drum pedal. It's got springs on it, so resistance is a part of what we're doing. So that might not be the best way to phrase it. But this just is a great feeling and transparent feeling pedal, if I can put it that way. So I'm really happy about it from that standpoint. The other thing I'm really happy about is it's just pretty. I mean, for crying out loud, I had other pedals available to me uh, on the backline kits that I used for festivals this past weekend. And, uh, you know, you pull this thing out and everybody, including the techs, are like, wow, what is that? That looks cool. That's a stupid thing to be happy about because nobody's going to see what your drum pedal looks like except you, the drummer, and maybe your tech or this, you know, you, you know cartage guy or whoever, if you have those people in your world. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to say is I uh, was really pleased to report that with this uh, clamp lock mounting system for the pedal, I put that thing on uh, several different bass drums, and it does not move. Man, I'll tell you what, it, it stays where you want it to be. Uh, I didn't even have to use the spikes coming out of the bottom of the thing. It's just there's something about the squareness. Maybe it's the plate. As you can see, there's a plate that the hoop butt, butts up against. Uh, and the, the thick kind of corrugated rubber gas getting in here. But that thing just clamps on for dear life, and it stays where you put it. So you better be sure you put it where you like it, because it ain't going anywhere. No, it's pretty easy, obviously, to unlatch it and, and uh, get it. make sure you put it in playing position where you want it. So in terms of just, hey, these are the things I want a pedal to do, man, it comes through in flying colors. So that is fantastic. Um, there's, if, if I'm going to be an honest reviewer, uh, there's, I have to talk about whatever the downsides are for this thing, if I can find them. So, and I did find something that I perceive to be a little bit of a downside, uh, and that's this. And you can decide for yourself if you think this is the kind of thing that would make a difference in your world. So obviously, as we said before, one of the things that's unique about, or I should say um, special, because there are actually other pedals that do this, but one of the things that makes the pedal different from other pedals is it does have a spring arm uh, adjustment. The spring arm is actually pointed up towards you when you're in playing position. It does give you the option to be able to make adjustments to that spring on the fly if you need to do that. Um, actually, the goal, it's funny because this pedal is very, very adjustable. And the, the great point about that is that you can make this pedal feel like whatever kind of pedal you want it to feel like. As long as you are making it feel like a pedal with a with a round cam uh if you if you are like me if you've come from playing a, a pedal that had an offset cam there is definitely a different feel to that than there is to one with a, a rounded cam like this one this is kind of the uh, i spent a lot more years on a rounded cam than i did on an offset cam so this feels like coming home for that reason alone and uh yeah so that's pretty great but as we said because you have this spring arm that's sticking up if you have a traditional uh, pedal case, or even the bag that this thing actually comes with, the only way to get this thing to actually fit into a regular bag, including the one that is supplied with the pedal, is if you release this, um, this screw right here, the axle adjustment, let's see, we actually have a, a cool manual here, and they actually identify everything on here, okay, so. So look at this thing, it looks it looks old too. The axle position screw, which is that guy right there. So you can loosen that, it, it folds the whole thing down, the arm, the beater, and the pedal board moves up and all that, that kind of stuff. So all of that will move down at once. The only trouble I have in doing that 
is that I, of course, like for things to be able to be set up. Um, and when I set them up, they are exactly the same as when I tore them down. Um, and that's, you know, that's a time saver. Obviously, you don't want to be screwing around with, with angles and stuff. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's kind of a sundial pattern on the side of this thing to sort of give you a clue as to where your tension was the last time you had it. The way I have it set right now, which is comfortable for me, I've determined after uh, some monkeying with it, you don't have like a straight up and down and there's not like a, there's not a, uh, you know, a point to really use as a reference on there. Uh, if I wanted to, I guess I could put a Sharpie. Uh, mark in, in the middle of that arrow kind of pointing straight up and down to say that that's where I want that thing to be um, I kind of don't like using sharpies for that type of thing. I don't like writing on my stuff I don't know just kind of an OCD thing I guess for me, but the thing that makes that really iron uh, well ironic is that Rogers is like the first hardware company that actually developed a memory lock for hardware uh, I have an old Tom stand from the 70s. It's a Rogers made thing and it had a memory lock, which was a really unique idea back then. And of course, you know, all the hardware companies use them now. So if only there was a way to fold this thing down such that uh, I could use it in the bag then and be able to set it back up and make sure I had it set in exactly the same spot every time without any guesswork, especially on like a dark stage when you can't necessarily see where all your adjustments are. I just like to be able to kind of click things into place and have it be there. This doesn't really do that. Um, maybe there's a workaround if somebody at Rogers knows of a way to do that that I'm just not picking up on. Love to hear your thoughts, but I don't actually see it. Now, there is a workaround, and uh, I'll show you what it is. Now, I don't use just the regular bag. I actually like to use injection molded cases, uh, including Velcro on there for no reason. Uh, I like using in injected molded cases for as much of my stuff as possible just because they're just about indestructible and you can toss stuff around and you know you're not going to be in too much concern about whether or not your stuff's going to be well taken care of. In my last video I demonstrated that you can remove the pedal, you can uh, take the pedal assembly, the, the footboard assembly off, you can remove this bar from the main assembly by unhooking it, if you can see that I'm unhooking it, pulling it out Okay, so then you have a loose, then the, the pedal is now loose, and using that, I have had no trouble, obviously, getting into this injection mold case. Okay, seems like a problem solved. And for the short run, I'd say yes, it is. The only issue I have with that is that if you were to fold down the, um, the tension arm, in, in doing that, you're going to keep the chain nice and straight, nice and even, and that by loosening this pedal the way I have in order to be able to fit into the case, um, I am now creating a little bit of sideways tension on each of the joints of this chain. Now, that may make absolutely no difference whatsoever, or it's possible that that's going to start to cause some wear on those joints. It may cause the thing to either become noisy sooner than it would otherwise, or it may actually cause the chain to fail at some point, you know, I'm just I'm just OCD enough to be able to look at what the possible problems that could come along with this thing and say, hey, that might be a problem. I don't know that it's a problem, obviously, because I've just started using the thing here in the last couple months. And I'm going to tell you, I am going to be using this pedal consistently. Because even though I did that, and, the, the, and again, the reason I did that is so that I can hook this thing back in and it will be in exactly the same playing position that it was before. So that definitely takes care of the... Um, ease of setup issue that was addressed by by uh, not having an actual memory or clickage or some kind of a, a lock mechanism in here that you can lock it back into. So this pedal, because I removed that bar, it's in the same playing position every time, and that's great. I'm just a little bit concerned that by um, putting some sideways tension on the pieces of the chain, it could attend, it could you know shorten the lifespan of that thing. But again, that's a that's a nit that I'm picking, and I'm picking the knit because otherwise I love this pedal so much. It is going to be my regular pedal going forward uh, because it just does what I want a pedal to do. It's very smooth, it, it feels really good, it clamps onto the shell and stays there on various kinds of kits, uh, and and it's pretty. Okay, so that's, that's my uh, two month trial of the uh, Rogers Dynamac pedal. Very happy that I paid whatever money I paid for this thing. 
And uh, I'm gonna see how long, let's see if I can break it. I'm just keep playing it until, uh, you know, until it won't play for me anymore, and then I'll probably fix it and keep going. All right, you guys, thanks so much. Keep making music, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.